all right, the 401k may have gotten me to retirement, okay, is that the vehicle that gets me through retirement? And welcome into your game plan for retirement, the show about your money, your investments, and your retirement planning. I am Peter Rashan. Joining me, as always, Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services, Northwestern Ohio. You've got a resource there for a common sense guidance on what you should be doing with your money and your investment decisions, walking you through them, making sure you make well-informed decisions. Chris, we always appreciate the time that you have with us and that you share here on the program. One of the biggest components of planning for retirement and investing for the American public is our 401ks, that plan that is set up right there on the job site where those contributions happen automatically. And despite the automatic nature of the 401k, probably still a lot of confusion, a lot of things that are unknown, and a lot of questions. So we want to tackle the 401k today talk about the pros, the cons, why it's a good tool to help us while we are working and saving, and perhaps why it's not the best tool to help us make it through retirement. But to start, Chris, let's overview the 401k and what it means to be investing in a 401k for our prospects and hopes for retirement. Yeah, you know, let's, uh, you know, kind of do a history lesson. When the 401k first came out, I believe the gentleman's name was Herbert Whitehouse, um, and I forget, he worked for a Fortune 500 company, and he thought that 401ks would be a great way for, uh, uh, you know, employees of big major corporations to have money saved to complement their pension plans. So the law of unintended consequences tells us that, boy, once the corporate accountants got a hold of that, they said, well, geez, why don't we just put more money into the 401k plan? We can get out of the lifetime income business, put that on the shoulder of the employees. And, you know, and since that time has happened, obviously contribution limits have gone up, you know, astoundingly on the amount of money that the American employees can put into their 401ks. And let's add in 403bs as well for people that work for like nonprofits that don't know that these things are very closely related. Um, we'll include those in, in today's conversation as well, Peter. And and eventually, Chris, those generally roll over into IRAs once we get into retirement. Now, whether or not that should always be the case, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but in general, once we get to retirement, a lot of those accounts, if we've had previous jobs or we've got different types of retirement vehicles, can be consolidated for kind of ease of housekeeping into our own personal individual retirement account, IRA, or one of the big choices and decisions that we face today, a Roth IRA. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of each of those on today's program as well. So a lot of information heading your way, ladies and gentlemen. As always, if you've got questions, concerns, if you would like to look over your investments, your 401k, if you'd like to make sure you're doing the right things with it to help you to and through retirement, you are welcome to be in touch. And that's the true value of the program is that, yes, we're informational here on the show, but Chris is a personal resource to so many proactive savers and investors across Northwestern Ohio. Many have taken advantage of the opportunity for that help and assistance, but many more need it. And again, if you've got questions or concerns on your mind, simply pick up the phone and give a call. 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194, 800 Chris, as well as the information we're going to cover, you actually have a list of 5401k mistakes. These are common mistakes that you find that people have made. And, and we'll talk about and highlight a several of those toward the end of the program. But if somebody would like this full list, they are also welcome to be in touch and, and you can provide that to them via email or, or mailing out a copy. Two page, just list of 50 common 401k mistakes, ladies and gentlemen. And you may want to make sure that you're not making any of these. So give a call again to request that 50 401k mistakes list 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Talked about it, just briefly mentioned a moment ago, but one of the biggest benefits of the 401k is that it is automatic and systematic and out of sight and out of mind. And that is 
probably attributable to the fact that many people have what they have. That is something that we can credit for helping a lot of people probably build savings that if the money actually came home and then it was, if it was up to us to make those contributions and get that saving and investment done, it just might not happen the same way. So the, the automatic systematic nature of the 401k is a big benefit, but there, there also may be some downside to having the bulk of our retirement savings so out of sight, out of mind. Can you, can you talk about that duality? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and everything's got pluses and minuses. And when we do our show here, we talk on both sides of it. So, you know, and I guess, you know, when we get into the duality, uh, you know, I, I help I help a lot of our clients, kids get started in retirement and they may say, well, should I just keep putting my money into my IRA? And I'm like, well, you're you're 30 years old. Do you have any other money in reserve in case you had an emergency that you could withdraw it, like in a bank account or even a regular investment account that was not part of the IRA plan? So, you know, there are times we say, look, I think you're overdoing it on your retirement plan right now. If you want to buy a house, you got to save some money for a down payment and have that, those dollars. So we help them balance that out. It's probably a good way of describing it, Peter. We don't, we're not knocking either one of these, but trying to help them, you know, build two pieces of their uh, of their financial plan. But Chris, one of the bigger benefits of the 401k is that match, that available free money and if we're putting that money in on an automatic basis, like don't forget to at least capture that free match would be something that I think across the board, almost universally, anybody giving financial advice would emphasize the importance and and the benefit of that. Yeah, without a question, you know, I mean, that's free money. And, you know, Peter and I are self-employed. We don't get any of that. And uh, I think our blanket advice is, look, take the free money, put it into the 401k. And, you know, and now in 2024, they can get, uh, if they have a Roth 401k, they can actually get their match put into the Roth 401k now as well. So, you know, as time has gone on, the expansion of the uses and, you know, and the more monies that you can put into these types of accounts has greatly expanded because, you know, America has a retirement savings crisis. And, uh, you know, I was at a social security class a couple of weeks ago, and I think they said the, uh, you know, the poverty rate for people 65 and older, you know, go back into the 1930s, I think it was 1935, was like 50%. Hmm. Today, it's nine and a half for the poverty rate for people over the age of 65. So, you know, America has done a great deal to help build wealth. And, uh, you know, and we still need to continue that as we transition away from those defined uh, benefit plans or pension the plans. Pensions. Will. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, but Chris, I, to your point there, for younger savers and investors, if they're retirement minded, fantastic, they're doing the savings in the 401k, but those dollars are technically not accessible until at least 59 and a half. So we do need to have some savings and some investments, perhaps for some other reasons as well. Obviously, the bank's purpose is for safety of cash and accessibility to that cash. So your emergency fund and your checking and savings and your transactions happen in the bank. But if we do have some desires for big purchases, a house down payment, a, a car that we know is coming up, a, a wedding, those those may be reasons why we need to save and invest money outside of the 401k. Yeah, without question, you know, we have a health savings account, so we put money into that. You know, my wife and I have our own regular investment accounts. That's not part of our IRAs that we like to have. Um, you know, the 401k is certainly good for, you know, especially the younger workers because it's almost a forced discipline. You know, and as you get a little bit older, some of that discipline becomes inherent because you're used to doing it for so long. And, you know, maybe you have less debts in retirement than you did, obviously, at age 30, 35, when you've got kids and whatnot. Or you're like Peter, who's 
might be a little bit older than 35. I'm not sure exactly Indeed. how old yeah, that guy uh, is there. About a decade, about a decade older. Uh, it, it, but, but, but Chris, different places for different money at different points in our lives. And that's what diversification is really all about. Yes, inside the 401k, we have that choice of, of options, the menu of different mutual funds, but essentially all of that money is focused for a single purpose. And so during our lifetime, we'll have different needs and we should have different pots of money. Now, the diversification within this particular pot, our retirement savings, is also important. Yeah, it certainly is because, you know, we don't want to, when you're younger, you want to have more money allocated into stocks. As you get older, you might look at other uh, other pieces, you know, within the 401k bonds as a, you know, just a, a generic example here. And as you get older, to get a little bit more conservative so you don't suffer those big big significant drops when the market falls and you know over time obviously the market has gone up so you know when you're younger you're better off being a more aggressive investor and you're making contributions you know every two weeks or depending how your pay period works buddy but chris is that why these uh life cycle funds or target date funds have become so popular and can you talk about the 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 benefits or disadvantages of that that they basically, in theory, automatically decrease that risk as we get closer to that target date or or our retirement phase. Correct? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Peter. And you know, they uh, as the calendar turns, so does the asset allocation mix. Is a good way of putting it. And you know, and if you think of it, if you're in the marketing department at uh, one of the big brokerage firms, you know, which is there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, it's a lot easier and probably cheaper for the companies providing the 401k from Vanguard, Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, Charles Schwab, so on uh, and so forth, to have fewer funds available in there. And those retirement lifestyle funds have certainly become the predominant source of where money gets allocated in many of those retirement plans. And as you mentioned before, all right, the 401k may have gotten me to retirement, Okay, is that the vehicle that gets me through retirement? Because your investment choices are limited to typically, you know, some of those lifestyle mutual funds, maybe some company stock that you work for. And sometimes there's limitations on what you can buy uh, in that company stock as well. So once you get into that, we'll say age 59 and a half, because then you're allowed to start doing some pre-retirement planning, if you will, with your current 401k. And you could look into the, you know, many different investment choices from individual stocks to CDs, annuities, all different types of vehicles that you can get in the IRA space that you cannot get in the 401k space, Pete. Uh, Chris, you mentioned the company stock. If that is available inside of my 401k, is that something that I should consider? Is that potentially advantageous? And then I know along with the 401k, a lot of major corporations will grant opportunities either for employees to buy stock on their own or simply kind of grant some company ownership in the form of stock units, regardless of whether the company or the, the, the employee rather puts in their own money, those stock units that that's often kind of vest with years of service. So is is that a a potential additional advantage and component for a well-rounded financial and retirement planning picture? Oh, it most certainly can be. I think of a client we have that works at uh, Owens Corning, big Fortune 500 company here in Toledo, and um, they're allowed to buy stock at a 15% price discount. So you know, they're buying it at, at, at a cheaper price, you know, because they're an employee. And that certainly, you know, is an advantage because you got a 15% gain immediately. And I forget if they have to hold it for six months or something like that, but that would certainly be an advantage. And then we've got another example. We deal with a lot of people that work at Church and Dwight, which makes Arm & Hammer baking soda and many other things too. And, you know, their, their employees, their stock had done so incredibly well over time that, many of the employees, that was basically all the things they had in their 401k was that one company stock. Mm -hmm. And they have since 
limited how much of that you can purchase. Be because there's some inherent danger in that as well, right? I think uh, I remember back to that big energy company, uh, Enron. Uh, I think that that was one of the components that was so devastating, which was that not only did the company sort of crumble, but a lot of the employees also had the bulk of their retirement savings and, and their 401ks and their pensions tied up within the stock price of Enron and the value of the company itself, which was like a double, triple whammy for those employees. So yeah. a, benef a benefit and a disadvantage potentially there. Yeah, so, you know, and I mean, in Church and Dwight's uh, probably, in a, uh, uh, you know, one of the exceptions to that rule there because they're such a diverse company, but nonetheless, you know, it's that over-concentration of the amount of money you have in one particular stock and, you know, and as fiduciaries, you know, we help them, you know, work to diversify some of that as well. Would you ever make a recommendation on like a max percentage somebody should have of their personal wealth in one company or maybe a max percentage somebody should have inside of their 401k and and, and retirement type of accounts? Yeah. yeah. And I say this tongue in cheek, you're uh, probably get some emails, you know, it's a, you know, it's those Church and Dwight guys that own a lot of that stock right there. And we, you know, we, sometimes you, you, you got to, you know, uh, needle them a little bit. And I'm saying this tongue in cheek because, and even Ball Corporation, which makes the ball jars for, for canning, you know, that's a company that's local here. Their stock has done incredibly well. So, you know, and, and people are like, look, over the last 30 years, look what I've done. Why do I mm -hmm. want to get rid of it? You know, and fixing something that's not broken and, you know, but, uh, you know, nobody would have thought, you know, GM goes belly up, Chrysler, yeah, United Airlines, Enron, you know, I mean, so things yep. can happen out there. All of a sudden, you know, the, one of the accountants embezzled some dollars and the stock falls by 40%, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that, 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 that can happen. That's why you diversify. Yeah, sometimes there are unexpected surprises. And again, that's why we're talking about the importance and the logistics of your retirement savings inside of your company sponsored plan, the 401ks, the 403bs with Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services. And unfortunately for most of us, we go through this one time. So if a mistake happens, it's kind of our first time seeing it and we have to experience it ourselves. Whereas Chris McIntyre with his years of experience has seen it many, many, many times over, has the benefit of seeing multiple situations and therefore that that knowledge, that benefit can transcend on to you, ladies and gentlemen. That is the value of dealing with an experienced, qualified professional and, and why Chris McIntyre makes the offer. And, and I urge you to take advantage of the time to sit down with him and, and review and evaluate your comprehensive planning and formulate your game plan for retirement. Everybody should have a written plan for their financial future at McIntyre Retirement Services. They call that the game plan for retirement. And if you'd like to get that game plan for retirement or just ask a few specific questions that are on your mind, pick up the phone, give a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. And Chris, we started this and, and sort of uh, dovetailed into some other conversations, but the automatic systematic nature of the 401k as being a benefit. I want to circle back to that for just a moment because the, the, the downside, the other side to that is that a lot of people have older accounts that they sort of have forgotten about or left behind. So again, the automatic systematic nature of these, by and large, is a great benefit to having the saving and investing getting done. We get it accomplished. But at the same time, it sh shouldn't be so out of sight, out of mind, that we forget to do some routine maintenance, like rebalancing along the way, or even leave a, an account behind altogether and sort of forget about it. Yes. You know, so let's say you worked at a place for 10 years, you got a better job offer, and you've been working there for 10 years and you kind of got an old dormant 401k that, you know, like Peter says, out of sight, out of mind. You haven't done much with it or anything. That money could be rolled into an IRA where you could look at a wide variety of different investment vehicles versus being locked into what the old plan has. And heck, you might even, you know, if that company gets bought or something like that, they may say, hey, we're terminating the old 401k plan. You need to do something with this. And 
here's the options and here's the paperwork that you need. And we help, uh, believe it or not, we do quite a bit of that for folks. And Chris, I've even heard and seen situations where that happens and and the person whose money it is, the person whose account it is still didn't really react or do anything. And then the their account gets rolled over to kind of a trust company. It's not invested. It's sitting in cash. And a lot of times there are high fees and expenses that happen both within the 401k that sometimes are, are hard to see, but especially on those older accounts where it's just chiseling and chipping away at your value without much benefit to you at all. Yes, Peter. And a lot of times, you know, there are some investment vehicles such as exchange traded funds that we can buy in IRAs that are very low cost compared to some of the actively managed mutual funds that might be in a 401k. And so right there is how we justify, you know, making these recommendations and whatnot, because we have to go through a comparison checklist and sign that, you know, as fiduciaries, you know, we have a lot of responsibility into making sure what we're doing is in the, in the client's best interest. And, you know, I think one thing we probably should bring up is, you know, there are some uh, protections that you get in a 401k from law creditor lawsuits and things like that, you know, where IRAs, you may not get that. So depending if you're still working, if you're in a, you know, like a doctor, for example, that's got a high risk of a lawsuit or, or malpractice or something like that, you know, we need to do some due diligence there and say, okay, are you still practicing? Does it make sense to keep the money in there and we can make the best of it? And then once you retire, then we can move over and, and, and kick it into an IRA. That's uh, That was uh, something I wanted to mention, buddy. I, I actually, I really appreciate that, Chris, because... If, if we go out kind of generically into the financial world, it seems like 11 out of 10 financial advisors are going to say, roll over your 401k, roll over your 401k, bring it to an IRA and, and, and let me manage it. And I think that there is some benefit there probably multiple benefits to the individual to whose money that is, but also some inherent self-interest from uh, financial advisors potentially. Whereas I, I, I appreciate what you said because that's not necessarily universally the case. There are some exceptions where some money sometimes should be left inside of the 401ks. And, and I appreciate you bringing up both sides of that. Now, there are also opportunities that people often are not aware of or may overlook where we can take more control over the money in our 401k. And you, you sort of mentioned one earlier, but I want to circle back to the 59 and a half is a benchmark age, not just because that's when we can withdraw money without the 10% penalty, but there are some additional components to 59 and a half, the in-service distribution that let people take more control of their financial future that are often missed and overlooked. Yes, and once you hit that age of 59 and a half, we, we call that a triggering event, okay? Because like Peter said, that's when you can take money out of your 401k without an early withdrawal penalty, okay? But it's also a point where if you're even if you're still working, um, you know, and I did two of these this week, Peter, you know, um, that people were still working. We called the 401k company and we moved money from the 401k into an IRA because they're going to be retiring before too long. We wanted to create an income portfolio that we were utilizing, you know, with investments we cannot purchase inside a 401k and start spinning that income off and building a cash surplus with that income so that once they retire, we can trigger, you know, we've got a reserve already built in and we can start those monthly distributions for the client. And you can begin to do things like manage your tax liability. And this is a big one, Chris, in my uh, best Shakespearean voice, to defer or not to defer, that is the question. And we've got a lot more choice and option with how we control and manage our tax liability, which for a lot of Americans is probably going to be one of their largest known expenses in retirement and something that we have sort of kicked the can down the road in a not realized debt to the IRS. We we have this 401k savings for many of us. And inside of that, we've got a bill that is yet to be paid. So age 59 and a half, and, and now more and more along the way, we've got the opportunity to control and manage that tax bill. Can you talk to us about the taxes on the 401k, what we need to know about planning for taxes in retirement? 
Sure. So if you've got a 401k or a 403b and you said, hey, I need to take out $10,000 and pay off my car loan, for example, okay, there is a 20% mandatory tax withholding on that $10,000. So you need to take that into consideration. Whereas if you had that money in an IRA, you could say, look, I'm only in a 12% tax bracket. Why do I want to take out 20? Why don't I just take out 12? And then maybe 4% for the state of Ohio is pretty common for us. So, you know, some of those, you know, mandatory rules that are in play because, you know, I just think they, they put those in play just to make sure that people, you know, if they were going to make a withdrawal, they paid their taxes. But it's not always that the 401ks are meant to be the distribution vehicles. They're probably better suited for the accumulation vehicles for workers. And that's like when you, why one of the reasons when you retire, you do execute a rollover in some sort of fashion into one or two different IRAs because maybe you want to put some money into an into a account with uh, the bank, the insurance company, and then have your regular investment account as well. That's very common. Again, talking with Chris McIntyre about what is the probably mainstay of retirement savings for the majority of Americans, the 401k, ladies and gentlemen, such an important and beneficial tool. There are things that you need to know about it, and there are often mistakes that are made with them. And that's why Chris McIntyre is here as a resource for you to plan your way to and through retirement. If you've got questions, if you'd like to review that 401k or your comprehensive retirement picture, pick up the phone and give Chris a call, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194, 800 800-868 Six eight one one nine four and Chris, you do have this resource of the fifty four hundred one k mistakes. I, I want to highlight just a few of these very quickly. Um, not reviewing your statements, not rebalancing, not understanding internal cost and fees. These are probably mistakes that I would say the majority of people who have the 401k make. And then relying on that 401k to make the transition to retirement is, a, is another one. Relying on the 401k in retirement, as you just touched on, may not be the absolute uh, most efficient way to plan for retirement because it comes with several additional risks. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some of it is the, you know, the lack of diversified choices that you'll have, um, you know, inside the IRA account. I mean, man, we got bank CDs, you got the annuity space, you've got individual stocks, exchange traded funds, you could buy gold, you could, you know, we don't do much Bitcoin or anything like that, but people can do, you know, basically invest in uh, a, a a, a very wide ar uh, array of investment choices. It's not unlimited. You can't buy, you know, a lot of things. But we've had clients that say, "Look, I I'm used to running rentals, uh, rental units, and whatnot. So can I open an IRA and buy real estate within it? You know, and some people can actually do that as well too. You know, but you know, it comes with a lot of restrictions. But many things you can do in an IRA, you sure as heck can't do that inside a 401k. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's three of the 5401k mistakes that are on this, this report, this list, ladies and gentlemen. And, and you should review it to make sure that you are not perhaps making any of these mistakes. Uh, one or two simple mistakes can be very costly for your retirement trajectory and outlook. And so let's avoid as many as we can. And of course, consult with an experienced, qualified professional to make sure that you are making well thought through, informed and efficient decisions with your money. That is the value of having a resource such as Chris McIntyre and McIntyre Retirement Services. If you've got questions, concerns, if you would like a review to make sure that you are uh, optimizing your 401k and your other retirement planning opportunities and vehicles, as well as avoiding some of the oversights and the mistakes that can be made, pick up the phone, give a call 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. And of course, your best investment is having a plan. And that's why you need to get the plan in your hands to make 2024, 2025, and the rest of your retirement outlook as optimal as possible. Get the plans in your hand to improve your outlook now and into the future. That is the game plan for retirement that Chris McIntyre offers to put together. No cost, no obligation. It is a chance for you to sit down with an experienced, qualified professional and craft and design your game plan for retirement. 800-868-1194, the number to call. That's 
800-868-1194. Chris, uh, I know that we just barely scratched the surface. There's a whole lot more that, that goes into the finer details of the 401k and other retirement savings opportunities, but I think it was a good overview and, and introduction to get people thinking about a very important topic and a very useful financial vehicle. Certainly somebody, uh, 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 an instrument many people are going to have to deal with here in, in the not too distant future. And, uh, you know, it's nice to know what all of your options are, why they make sense, why some of them may not make sense. And, you know, we're here to, you know, kind of tell the entire story, not just half of it. Well, make sure you're making the most and not missing those opportunities as well as identifying blind spots and mistakes. That's what Chris McIntyre helps his clients there at McIntyre Retirement Services do each and every day. Give him a call, ladies and gentlemen, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Chris, we always appreciate your guidance and insight. My pleasure to be with you today, everybody. Be safe and thank you for listening. Tune into Chris McIntyre's full radio program and visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management, while insurance products pay a commission, which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation.